Hey everybody, welcome to the Eco Dev live stream. I'm John Kay, designer of Eco, founder of Strange Loop, and today we're going to be talking about some new features in Eco we're adding, uh, something called demographics and uh, wages, which is a way to pay people for work in the game. Uh, so me and Todd are here in the game. Uh, I think Todd can hear me. You should be able to chat on the uh, the mic, the in-game audio, Todd. So yeah, this is our little town we've set up for demoing. <clears throat> we've got our giant capital here. Uh, show you a little overview. Uh, oh, there's Todd slash Weasel Dog. <clears throat> so we've set up a bunch of government objects here. Uh, one of the main features of Eco 9 is that you can you now design the government, whereas previously you it was pre-set up and you would kind of fill in the blanks. Now you actually create a constitution, uh, design how everything works. So we'll get these really interesting societies that people are building. Uh, so demographics is one of the features of that. So yeah, let's take a look around. can also see a lot of the new buildings that were uh, new building types that we're adding a uh, ton of new stuff in this update this is represents probably about a year's worth of work for the team uh, we're gonna start doing more frequent updates but uh, this will be this will be a really big one for us so here is the new census bureau object so this is what allows you to set up demographics so uh, what is a demographic so in the game in Eco, uh, being a multiplayer collaborative game, there's tons of uh, players in the game of all kinds of different skill levels, all kinds of different specialties that they have in the game, different amounts of play time. And demographics allow you to customize uh, different groups of people and then assign uh, specific roles to them. So let me clear this here. So here on the demographics, uh, on the Census Bureau object, you have three demographics slots that you can fill in. Uh, so this is this is part of the government so that means it's controlled by uh, the Constitution. So let's pull up our little government panel here. So I've already installed a Constitution on this world uh, and you can see the different articles of the Constitution. This, this just tells you how you can create new facets of the government. So for example here's the demographic changes article which applies to demographics. Uh, and you can see to change demographics everyone may propose an election of type of basic election so this just means if you want to change a demographic you've got to you've got to run an election to do it uh, so some servers might not set it up this way some servers might have just a dictator that can set them by fiat or maybe you have like a minister of demographics who can set this up so really flexible system where you can have different responsibilities and demographics play into that uh, so right now I'll have to start an election to do it. So let's go over here and set one up. So this is a demographic. We're going to set up a simple one, which will be called newbies. And this will be a way to have uh, new players in the game. Uh, so it allows us to set a, uh, a group that will constantly update of just players who are new in the game. So let's Let's define what that means. So here's a little programming, uh, kind of a, a dynamic programming system we have where you fill in these uh, templates that define what a demographic is. So let's say that we want to do a check on how many hours they've played. So we do a compare operation, just compares two values. And then we can compare the citizen age in hours of citizen. This is the person, the demographic being queried. And it has to be less than, uh, we'll just enter a number here, say 10. So for the first 10 hours, you're considered a newbie. Uh, and if you'll notice here, there's all kinds of ways to enter these numbers. So this is you can slot in all kinds of different ways. So it's, it is a little like programming. It's kind of this like smart contract you can create. So, you know, you could cr calculate based on the wealth that they have or their reputation or specific actions they've done in the games or the world age or the population of different species. 
So you really have a ton of flexibility in how you do this. <coughs> and one of our goals with 9.0 is just, we built this system to be really easy to create. So now like adding a new one of these types is just dead simple. You can do it in like an hour. So there's just so many different ways that you can uh, configure and program these worlds. And just uh, every world's gonna be really different based on how players set it up. Uh, really different societies and really looking forward to just seeing what players create and how these societies start to evolve. So yeah, so this one here is just pretty basic. Citizen age in hours is less than 10. So let's propose that. And now you've seen it's gone to law or it's gone to election. So it's in this election to add the newbies demographic started by me, conducted using rules. And you can look here to see what the newbies demographic is that is being proposed. Citizen age in hours is less than 10. So, oh, it hasn't been ticked yet, so you can't see the numbers. <clears throat> so yeah, so that would go to an election. And the way elections work is they, uh, well, first of all, everyone in the server will see a notification that voting has started for this election add newbies election and then you can see it in also see it in the government list so here's the elections uh, the newbies demographic has been proposed and then if we want we can go vote on it uh, let's skip back so I don't have that set up for streaming uh, and then if it passes it'll be coming to law so I'm going to do a dev command here to just pop it into law real quickly and there we go. So now it's in the active slot here. It's no longer just proposed. It's active. It's starting to take effect. You can see a notification got sent to everybody that this is uh, now active. Uh, the election itself is removed because it's finished. Election complete. Winner is yes. I voted yes. I'm the only person here right now. So it is now in effect. So let's take a look at this now. So we've got this new newbies grouping and it's going to show up in population. Uh, here it is, newbies. So we can see that there are two newbie members, three non-members. And you can look on these tooltips, it'll show you the reason why anybody is a member or not a member. So I'm a newbie, I've only been in 0 0.41 hours. Todd is a newbie, he's been in 0 0.11 hours. Whereas three other users, Beeston, Slakes, and DevQA, they've been in for ages. It's our QA team, so they've uh, they are not newbies in this world. <clears throat> so yeah, so we've defined this new group, and now we can decide what do we want to do with that. So basically, now this is just another. Uh, entry that you can use anywhere that you would assign permissions where you could use them laws so one thing we could do is we could go make a special uh, newbie claiming area oh let's do that yeah so we're gonna designate an area that only newbies can claim claim properties in uh, and that'll make use of our district system hey Todd Let's see if we can find a district. Well, that's a pretty town. Find a zoning office. Oh, I wanted to see this. No. Let's have a look on the map. You can see all the different types of objects you have here. It should be popping up a tooltip. There we go. Workbench. What's this one? Advanced masonry table. I'm pretty sure there's a district map somewhere here. Where do we got that? Not sure. We, oh, there it is. Zoning office. Cool. So let's go take a look at this guy. Oh, you know what? We're going to use a little world marker. So 
we just drop a marker it's going to guide me to it there it is it's one feature uh, that gets a lot of use in the game This turkey just hanging out in the capital. <laughs> here we got election, board of elections, and here's our zoning office. All right, so let's make a new district. So this is something I showed off in a previous uh, blog and live stream. But let's go ahead and do it. So we're going to designate this will be property. Claim areas. Now we're going to make a newbies only. So maybe this is a, a fairly developed server. We want to attract some new players, give them a way to kind of you know do well in the game. Let's pick a nice bright yellow for that. So we're going to say that this whole desert area is allowed for newbies to join. we go and let's just do this area too so go ahead and submit that so now this is gone to election same process as any government object uh, you can see that it uh, sends a notice adding the property claim area district has been started let's go ahead and force finish that and take a look okay there we go it's in so there is 2200 square meters for newbies only so we set up these two factors we've got the district we've got the demographic now we need to link them by law so let's go over to our court court is on the second floor and the stone masonry building all right, so here we've got our court. Uh, we can start elections to change any law, so it's the same same deal with the Constitution. All right, so here's some of the law programming interface. So let's make a law about claiming or unclaiming property. So if, let's see, oh, so what we want to do now is say if you're claiming property in a newbie district then you have to be a newbie in order to do it so we'll say the district requirements newbies only if it's inside of that and then we'll add another one which is the demographic requirements this is going to use any demographic we just made is newbies So what we want to do is prevent it if they are not a newbie. So if they are claiming a newbies only and they have they do not have the newbies demographic, then it will be prevented. There we go. So you can you know and then you can decide uh, oh so all of these have to be true and then this is the action that, that takes place. And you can read it here. It creates this dynamic description. So on event claim or unclaim property, if action is located inside newbies only and citizen doesn't have newbies, then prevent. So pretty clear, plain text. Uh, so as you're kind of designing this, you can you can see how how it would be described. Uh, so so yeah, this has been one of the biggest most interesting design challenges is making the system that's you know super powerful. You got all these different kinds of uh, setups you can do. But still making it that it's going to be usable, it's going to be understandable, you can kind of play with it and start to understand how it works. So this is a big part of that, having this description here. Uh, you know, tool tips on everything. So you can see districts, you know, each property, you can see what it's, what it's describing, what is the district requirement, it sets requirements for which districts will cause a trigger, you know, what is the trigger. So everything has pop-up help on it, uh, just making it as, as easy as possible. newbie help. Let's go ahead and propose that law, finish it up. Uh, 
oh, somebody wants me to turn up my volume. It's a little hard to do. Maybe I can do that real quickly. Add a filter to that. Let's see. All right, hopefully that's a little better. Okay, cool. I boosted it a bit, hopefully that helps. Okay, good. Uh, so yeah, I see a lot of questions coming in in chat. After I demo this stuff, we'll start going through those. So if they don't respond right away, just give me a sec. All right, so we've got a newbie help here. Oh, and it looks like Todd is claiming land. Is he claiming in the newbie area? Yeah, he is, there we go. So so Weasel Dog is a certified newbie. You can see here he's listed in the newbies demographic and he is already getting busy claiming that land. So that'll be a nice little reserved area strictly for newbies. Uh, let's, let's give a demo of uh, how how laws prevent things. So let's go and revise our districts and our demographic. So this is kind of a new feature to the government that uh, you can revise things really easily in the game. So say we want to go make a change to this district. We don't have to create a whole new one and relink it and everything. We can just revise it. So I click revise and you see it's created a new draft. So if this draft gets voted into law, then it will automatically replace this existing one and all laws that use it will start using the new one. So we got property claim areas too. So let's use, let's set up a no newbies area. So this area is going to be, if you're a newbie, you cannot claim it. We'll say this whole area here, experienced players only. None of these, these newbies are going to be allowed in there. And we'll go ahead and submit it. See it goes to election. So here the election is change this district map to this district map. You, know, you see this old one doesn't have the no newbies. This new one does have the no newbies. And you can click it to get a, a view of it, a read-only view of it. Uh, so you can, you can make your electoral decisions accordingly by studying these. And uh, you can have discussions about them inside the web interface. So let's go ahead, finish that. Boom, there we go. And let's see, what did that say? There we go, property claim areas, change property claim areas too. And we should now see property claim areas too is the active district map and there's two districts in it. Let's see if the law updated also. So here's our law, the newbies help law. And yeah, it's using the new district. So it's magically updated all the things that use it. Makes it really easy to update these things and not break your government. So you have a really dynamic, flexible government that you can update. This is kind of cool here. Have you seen this? We have icons that represent laws. It's kind of like this hieroglyphic system. So this is a law about claiming property that, that prevents it. So the, the trigger and the action create little icons here. So everywhere you see this law, you know, like up here, you're going to see these two icons. It just kind of gives you like a nice flavor of what this law is about. Oh, it's doing something about preventing claiming. So kind of a cool little visual language that we've, we've set up for, uh, for laws. All right. So we've gone ahead and created that new district. Let's go update the laws that concern it. Go up here. We're going to revise my law. We're going to add a new claim or new section. We'll label this will be newbies not allowed section. And this one, if you're claiming or unclaiming property, uh, in district requirements, inside the no newbies lands, 
and demographic requirements newbies there we go so if you have newbies and you're claiming in the no if you have the if you're part of the newbies demographic and you're claiming in the no newbies land then we prevent that so you can read here if action is located inside no newbies and citizen has newbies then prevent so this kind of divides up two different areas of the world into claimable by newbies not claimable by newbies there we go so we've passed it you can see what it does it's got two sections one that gives special privileges to newbies one that takes them away and it concerns this district we just made and makes use of this demographic one thing to note with this demographic so because it is uh, it updates all the time every tick like once I pass 10 hours I'll no longer be a newbie and I'll automatically no longer be able to claim land so it's kind of a nice dynamic way to to set up these systems that you don't have to manually decide who is a newbie who isn't a newbie the system just calculates that every tick all right so let's go over since I am a newbie there's Todd trying to probably trying to claim land and failing over there blocked by law so let's get let's turn on the district map okay here we go so I've turned on this district map and this is pretty nice because now I can see it in my mini map here which which districts are which and we can even do oh, there's, let's see that setting yes show in world will that work for districts maybe yeah so that gives us an easy way let's pull up let's get our dock our mini map here make it easy to view where we're going stick that up here there we go really love the new UI that our uh, artists and uh, programmers have put together it's one of the things we've been focusing on too is just visual polish making things easier making things better all right here we go we're in no newbies land you can see down here it tells me I'm in this district uh, this district is referenced by the newbie help law so if you've noticed we have a big influence or a big uh, you know, design direction that everything you can see in the game you can just mouse over to get more info and having tons of info there so what is no newbies oh this is a district inside the property claim areas map it's referenced by newbie help too so making things as accessible as possible as easy to use as possible so let's pull out let's give myself a claim tool claim stake there we go so I'm gonna try to claim some land here and there we go claim or unclaimed property blocked by newbie help to action prevented so because I'm a newbie I am blocked from doing that by law and that's the the notice we get so making it really clear that something is illegal why you're not able to do it here's the law you know you're not a newbie how come I'm not a newbie uh, well here it says right here says an agent hours is less than 10 so I am I'm currently a newbie and that uh, makes me ineligible in this region so yeah that's a look at our demographic system uh, it's just kind of the tip of the iceberg in terms of what she can do uh, the way we've designed the system is there's lots of different parts of the government that all fit together so demographics fits into permissions it fits into laws it fits into districts fits into everything so we had a new feature like that suddenly every other feature has become richer uh, and more depth to it so really makes it nice as, as our project starts to mature you know we add this stuff and you know a single little change can just have huge repercussions for all the interesting stuff that it affects so yeah let's take a look at chat if you guys have any questions I'll uh, I'll take a peek at that and uh, can demo some other stuff 
Uh, Wiggy asks, are we still unable to break laws? Yes, you, uh, the server uh, prevents you from breaking laws, but that is a feature that we want to add before uh, you know, we leave early access is a way to break laws and a justice system. I think that is going to be so cool that we'll have like trials, you know, it'll be like events, you know, juries and all that stuff. So I think that's a really interesting branch of government that would add a lot to the game. Uh, but for now, the server server enforces everything. Uh, Phoenix Rage asks, I have a question to Eco. You need a server to play with friends or is there a co-op available? Uh, you can host your own servers in Eco. Uh, there's also tons of third parties, just players hosting servers, looking for people to join. Um, and we also make it really easy to just, you know, you can host a server when you run the game and invite players in. So there's plenty of uh, flexibility in how you want to play. Uh, you can also play single player, uh, but you lose a lot of the government features and economy features in that mode. I really hope the web UI is really usable in 9.0 compared to 8. Can't wait to try it. Yeah, we've done a, work, a lot of work on that. And we've also moved some stuff out of the web UI. So like you saw that the law program interface is now in game. So it's just a lot more tightly integrated. Uh, Phoenix Rage, you have to pay for that server. If you host your own server, uh, you you can host your own server for free. Uh, and there are plenty of services that allow you to rent a server from them if you want to host it in the cloud. Uh, we're also making a hosting service for hosting in the cloud as well. Uh, but yeah, hosting your own server is free. Eco is a really good game. Keep up the good work. Thanks a lot, Angie. Zarween. Yeah, the community is really awesome for this game. I really love just get so much great feedback coming from everybody. It's just so much fun to work on. I'm not sure if it is still going on or not, but is EXO still being developed? Oh, that is a that is a secret project which uh, I can't talk about. So uh, we will we will pretend that we didn't mention that one. Thanks, uh, Sharakna. You know, shoot me an email if you want to know more about that. Let's go look around a little bit more of the town here. No worries. All these little turkeys running around. We also did a lot of work on new animals and making animals uh, just animate better. Uh, my friend and me are thinking of buying that game. You think we can get full fun with two people? Uh, yeah, I think that you know the game has a ton to offer, even if you have a small number of people. Uh, with that number of people, the dem the uh, government features are not going to be as useful, and the economy features are not going to be as useful. But you're still going to have you know tons of ecosystem features, you know mining, building, crafting. So you can definitely experience uh, really have a really interesting experience with a low number of people. But I do encourage people if you're you know you want to just play, play with a couple of people, just make the server public and let other players come in. Uh, it really just adds a lot to the experience, so something to think about. Sharakna says, I started a server for my students that wanted to play Eco and it was easy to set up. That's great to hear. Yeah, so we're really hoping to bring this into the education world also. So Eco is, you know, it's based on a lot of scientific principles and thing, you know, Game mechanics that happen to be educational. And this is this is kind of my philosophy on games: is that they're such a powerful medium for making you interested in subjects, making things relevant to you. Like my favorite example is uh, taxes in the game. Like taxes are something that basically everybody is you know bored with and can't stand in real life. It's it's really obnoxious, but in uh, in eco, it's interesting because you are running the society. You need taxes to build stuff. You see the whole picture. So things like that really tie it into the education world in a really interesting way. So, so we're building eco that uh, you know a classroom can have their own world where they're setting up the society. They're trying to solve these global challenges. Uh, that's kind of our long-term vision for for what we want to you know, expand eco beyond entertainment. Uh, so far, mostly we're present in uh, you know, Steam and the entertainment world, but uh, 
there's a ton we want to do there. One of the biggest challenges we face is just the the uh, a lot of schools don't have you know gaming systems. They don't have GPUs, so they're not, they can't really run the game at the full resolution, uh, and or just runs really slow for them because they don't have gaming machines in schools or they're using Chromebooks or something like that. But our our plan for that is that we want to start using the game streaming services like Stadia or uh, Amazon service or the NVIDIA one. So ways that a school, you know, as long as they have internet, they could play it on anything. So they could pull out their Chromebook, you know, their $100 Chromebook and get the full graphic experience of Eco as long as they have a decent net connection. So I think that'll really open up a lot of, uh, a lot of the education world to, uh, to Eco. Is it just your settings or the animal draw distance is really small? Uh, I think we've been messing with lots. It's not too small. You can see that bison out there. See him pretty far away. Maybe you're thinking of the butterflies and the crickets and stuff. They uh, they tend to disappear sometimes, but the larger animals should be within the draw distance. Seeing the rules laid out for tax brackets in smaller, easier to read numbers makes it so much easier to understand. Yep, that silly old Jack mentioned that. That's uh, that's definitely something we we want to make these as as clear as possible to understand. It runs well on our surface. Oh, that's good to hear. Yeah, surfaces are decently powerful. I'd like to. Oh, Alex says I'd like to be able to leave my steam trucks my headlights on when I'm mining because it gets pitch black at mines. That's a good idea. Lighting is something we've been tweaking a lot for 9.0. Uh, yeah, there are like torches and other kinds of objects we can use, but we've made lighting a lot less forbidding right now. Eventually I'd like to have a, a fancier lighting system where you can dynamically light stuff a lot easier, but uh, we're kind of waiting for Unity's new lighting systems to make that, to improve that. Do you guys have a date for 9.0 release yet? You know, we had one internally, but we decided that we want to keep working on performance. Uh, performance being the main factor that I want to shit this game, which is great performance for everybody. It's one of the main complaints that we've had in the game. Uh, so we're doing a ton of work on that. So still working on that one, but I'm pretty confident that we'll be able to get the game really nicely performant on a wide range of machines. So we're, we're kind of hesitating. We're, we're not announcing a release date until we're sure that performance is going to be delivered. So hopefully people can have patience, but yeah, we will, we will announce it once we're, we're getting closer to that. Are there any plans for working on the storage screen? It's a real pain to have to drag and scroll through 12 pages when you have a lot of containers. That's a good question. Let me go find a storage screen. Yeah, so here you see there's like four different ones here. Um, so the question is, if you have a ton of different storage containers, this can get really long. I mean, you do have the ability to, to hide these, so hopefully that kind of helps. Uh, but if you have any other feedback for, for ways that you think that we could improve this, the organization of this, you know, do let us know. We have our suggestions database. Being able to auto sort things into certain storage would be nice. Yeah, that's a good idea. Maybe you have like a little filter here, because uh, we we already do have a filter button in the game. So you, you know, in the trades window, you can say like these are the things I want to filter, uh, and then it will only show those particular items. So maybe we have that in the storage system, where you say this storage only accepts wood, something like that. I like that idea. We'll think about that. Uh, let's see. Will cutting edge cooking be implemented in 9.0? I believe so. That's uh, that's something Todd's been working on. Is he still around? I think he might have hopped out. Oh no, he's up there. Yeah, we have a ton of new tech tree changes. I think cutting edge cooking is in there, but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, but if not, it's something we'll be adding soon. Is there a beta test sign up, or do you guys need testers for the 9.0? Uh, 
Yes, we are going to be opening up staging testing. So uh, follow us in Discord for information on that. Oh wow, somebody made a gold plated floor here. That's pretty cool. <laughs> that is very expensive. See, this is what happens when the government runs amok. You get the gold plated floors. <laughs> yeah, that is fancy. So yeah, catch us in Discord. We'll have uh, we'll have public tests. It'll be great to have people giving us feedback. See our new desert our desert biome out there. Uh, let's see what else would be cool to show you guys. Been working on this so long, kind of forget what's new, but there's just a ton of new stuff. We got our fountain. Love the way this guy looks. Oh, you know, one thing, uh, start to show you our new uh, crafting systems. This is going to be... I don't think I've done a blog on this yet, but we have a new labor system in the game. So say if I want to make a campfire, now it takes uh, 3 wood, uh, 12 rock, and 35 labor. So if I go ahead and order this, you can see we got this nice uh, graphic here that the campfire is halted, it needs materials to proceed. So let's just drop in some materials. There we go, I've added added one granite, and you see that the, the blue bar here has gone up a little bit, but now it needs labor to proceed. So we're going to go ahead and perform labor, and it's created the yellow bar, which is the labor bar. So time will go up as much as it can until it, it reaches a bottleneck. So I've only added one granite, so it can only craft a little bit of that. But if I add another one, now time can keep going up. So this labor system really adds an interesting dynamic to crafting that, uh, you know, not only do you have to add ingredients, you've got to add labor, and that uses your calories. So you can see my calories are going down a lot when I'm using this labor. And there will also be some specialized labor where you need a certain skill in order to do it. So that's going to be a, another, it's just a you know, kind of a small change mechanically that has just big ripple effects through the game because now I need, you know, if I don't have a certain specialty, I might need to get help for that one. I might need to find somebody who has that particular specialty in order to do my labor. And then I can use a work party to do that. So if we saw in a previous demo, you can make these work parties, which is basically a way to get help from the community for building something. So here's a work party where uh, you know I need to add these materials for the campfire. Oh, there's no more labor needed, so I can remove that. And post that. And now people can come along and participate in that. Uh, and they'll get payment for it too. So we had a contract system before. This is, this is going to eventually extend and replace contracts where uh, anybody can kind of join these things automatically asynchronously they can come and just start contributing to these projects. So you can have these kind of town-wide projects that everybody contributes to, they automatically get payment for, all kinds of stuff. So yeah, check out the blog post on that. We did a big uh, big demo of that previously. This is another really cool uh, addition to the economy of the game. Uh, someone asked, labor needs calorie, labor means calories? Yes, labor Labor means calories when you have a specific skill. So maybe maybe you need the like uh, carpentry skill in order to build you know a certain tool, for example. So not anybody can apply the calories to that. Only the person who has that skill. And the better you are at that skill, the fewer calories it's going to take. So you'll have people who have a big advantage in doing certain kinds of labor on the in the world. What's the ratio of calories to labor? Gwaldrag, Gwalheld Dragon asks, uh, 
it depends on your level. So if I'm like a master carpenter, then my calories are going to equal much more labor. So this is a, another way that the skill system comes into effect in the game. Oh, let me show you our new skill UI. I'm really liking this. We got these new new graphics representing the different professions. <clears throat> Farmer, hunting. So each new kind of group of specialties is contained under this profession. Uh, so, and we tinted the skin color to whatever your avatar skin color is. A nice little <laughs> polish feature there. Uh, yeah, so we just organize these in a, in a much easier to understand way where you choose, you know, which profession you want and which specialty under that profession. And then you can claim it and start leveling it up. So I get the logging skill. Now my logging XP is going to go up. So yeah, pretty much everything in the game has had a, an upgrade either visual, you know, both visually and mechanically in the game. Uh, skill system is another example of that. Better skill, fewer calories. Wasn't that the main issue to make cooking almost useless in mid to late game? Yeah, one of the things was that cooking became less useful in the mid game because you were getting tools, you were using less calories. Now, pretty much all the uh, crafting is going to require calories, which puts a big pressure on food. So food become continues to be important throughout the entire game, making chefs useful throughout the entire game. So just an example of you know, it's kind of a blessing and a curse that you add a new feature like this, like crafting requires calories. Okay, that affects everything in the game, and we got to go through and make sure everything's balanced because now everything, uh, you know, food is suddenly more important. And then where does the food come, and how does that affect the ecosystem? And just these ripple effects, you know, it's, it makes it really cool and interesting, but it also makes it really, uh, you know, challenging to balance, which something Todd has been working on. Todd's doing an awesome job at that. Uh, and we've got some people who are just, uh, you know, from the eco community, give us tons of feedback. Some of them, we've actually started to, uh, you know, we we brought it onto the team. For example, Todd just is a played a ton of eco and was giving us lots of good suggestions. And we said, hey, why don't you come work with us? And uh, yeah, great to have him. So, how many different hue logs lumbers are to build with? Ah, so. Yeah, that kind of gets into the tagged crafting system. So now we have different kinds of wood in the game. Uh, so you can see that there is hardwood hewn log, regular hewn log, and softwood hewn log. So this depends on what kind of uh, wood you're using. So if you're using a softwood, which is cedar, fir, redwood, or spruce, you're going to get softwood hewn logs and if you're using a hardwood you're going to get hardwood hewn logs let's see what a hardwood hewn log looks like and those are made from hardwoods which are birch siva and oak so it gives a visual difference in what you're creating so you'll kind of see a town that's next to a bunch of oak trees versus the town that's a bunch of next to cedar trees cedar trees is going to just look different because these are different kinds of uh, wood so let's let's see. So we got a cedar. I think it's a cedar, isn't it? Birch. It's a birch. Birch is what? I think that that's softwood it produces birch log. Yeah. Let's make an oak too. There we go. So we got an oak and a birch. Chop these guys down my super axe I just leveled up logging there we go so you see that the logs look a little different like here's what oak logs look like and then cedar logs are gonna look different so a lot more variety in the types of objects uh, let's put down a little workbench here I can show you how the different hewn logs work So go ahead <coughs> and create hewn logs. So you can see that when you order these, it's going to create a different type based on what I use in it. So there, it's taken my 
hardwood and I'll go ahead and add the labor to it. There we go. Use 30 calories of labor and it will uh, finish working on that. Sylvia so asks, except for the aesthetic, is there any other difference between the soft and hard logs? Right now it's purely aesthetic, but we've been thinking about ways to do that. Like if you craft all your furniture from the same type of wood, maybe there's a housing bonus. Uh, so different things like that that makes it, you know, you kind of create sets or maybe there's a more rare wood that you can get something that gives a few more points. Uh, so that's something we're, we're looking at doing. All right, let's grab this hewn log, take a look. It should be a hardwood hewn log. I think. Hmm. It might just be a regular hewn log. And then let's get our birch out. This is our dev axe that kills everything in one hit. And I just made a giant mess. Luckily there's no laws on the server to prevent that. There we go. So you see the cedar log looks a little different than the oak log we saw before. And cedar, was cedar hardwood or a softwood? I need to recheck that. I'm oh, sorry, birch. Softwood tag. Oh no, birch is a hardwood. I need a cedar tree. I'm gonna drop this. Let's go chop down a cedar tree. So in the actual game you'll have to find these you know different forests that have the different types of wood that you need. Luckily for me I can just spawn these. Give it a single chop. Never get tired of that tree falling animation. All right, so here we got some soft wood. Let's make another hewn log out of it. There we go. It's taking my soft wood, put in the labor. And it should create a different looking hewn log. Ah, you know, it's giving me the same one. All right, well, we just discovered ourselves a bug. Best way to find bugs is to do a demo. So anyway, what will happen is you'll get a different type of hewn log based on the type of wood that you use. And then when you build stuff, it'll have a, a different look to it. So take a look at that. It's still, still fixing tons of stuff, so put that one on the list. <laughs> I think you have to choose another project than hewn log. You know, usually there's, it should auto choose it there's supposed to be a little setting that you can choose which variety you want to use. Anyway, we'll look at that guy. Needs carpentry table. Oh, you know what? I think you're right. I think I got moved to the carpentry table. Oops. Actually, that's going to need a house. So let me spawn one. Instant workshop. Ha! Ah, yes, there it is. Okay. Yeah, they got those got moved a while back. Yes, so this one will give me the, the one that I'm looking for. So let's give myself some let's demo that. Give myself some birch logs. Create some hardwood. Uh, 
birch. Birch is hardwood. And then softwood is cedar. Here we go. There we go, hardwood yew log. And then we go to the softwood. Give myself cedar log. Drag that in. Do the work. <laughs> Eduardo says, you're never tired of seeing trees falling. The game is called Eco. Yeah, but sometimes you gotta break a few eggs to make an omelet, as they say. There we go. Now you can see that these softwood and hardwood looks different. So if we actually build something with those, it's our new hammer menu too, by the way, because there's so many new options. You can build massive things out of it. Get a little floor piece, softwood floor piece versus a hardwood floor piece. You can see they have a slightly different look to them. Same thing you'll get with different types of rock. Even different types of objects will have that as well. We're also going to add painting at some point, but that's not for 9.0. Uh, but yeah, so you can kind of see the, the the little towns that grow up around a resource location will start to resemble the surrounding areas. You know, a bunch of hardwood, you're going to see hardwood buildings. Uh, and eventually we'll add mechanics that require these kind of specialized things, or you get a bonus if you have certain kinds of rare resources, for example. All right, so it's been about an hour. I think we'll call it a stream for now. Uh, thanks everybody for joining in. Great to hear everybody's feedback. I got some good suggestions on the, the storage things too. And looking forward to getting 9.0 uh, to out there. Working away on it. Still got some uh, some time to go on it, but uh, building up the hype, building up the the polish on it, and looking forward to seeing what everybody makes of it. So, cool. Good to see everybody. See you next time. Bye.